Almost everyone enjoys a good mystery. But what happens if a mystery never has a conclusive ending? According to a CBS study, nearly half of all murders go unsolved. The following unsolved police cases are bizarre, unsettling, and frustrating. There are cases where the killer is known, but there is not enough evidence to arrest or convict them. Other times, we must live with the fear that murderers are walking among us and no one has a clue. So here are five of the most puzzling and darkest unsolved murder mysteries to date. Room 1046 on January 2nd, 1935, there was a man who checked into room 1046 at the Hotel President in Kansas City. According to the hotel registry, his name was Roland T. Owen, and his address was in Los Angeles. He had brown hair and a horizontal scar on the scalp. Strangely, he only had a hairbrush, a comb, and toothbrush in his luggage. A maid came by Owen's room number 1046 on the same day he checked in. She said Owen appeared terrified when he saw her. She noticed that Owen had closed all the blinds tightly and the only light source in the room was a little light bulb. When the maid finished cleaning his room, he asked if she could leave the door open because he was expecting a visitor. When the maid came back a little later with fresh towels, she doesn't find Owen in the room, only a note that says the following, Don, I will be back in 15 minutes. Wait. The maid comes back to room 1046 the next morning. Because the door is locked from the outside, she assumed Owen had left. To her amazement, Owen was in the room, indicating that someone else had dropped by earlier and locked Owen in. Owen was sitting in the dark, just as the night before. As the maid is about to make her exit, the phone rings. Owen picks it up and says, No, Don, I don't want to eat. Owen replied, I'm not hungry at all. I just had breakfast. Later that night, the maid returns to room 1046 with more fresh towels and the rude, rough-looking Mad Owen sends her away. The next day, when reception noticed that the phone in room 1046 was disconnected, they send a bellboy to the room to check it out. He finds Owen lying in the pool of blood, injured but alive. The police ask Owen who tortured him, but he claims it was a bathtub accident. To add to the mystery, Owen's clothes was missing. The police go further to discover that Owen's identity was completely made up. He becomes John Doe, and before police could further question him, he dies in the hospital. The mystery continues when a mysterious woman named Louise wires money to pay for Owen's funeral. Almost a year later, a woman comes forward and confirms that Owen is her son, Artemis Ogletree. Unfortunately, she could not provide any information regarding the murder of her son or who Don was from the phone call. The Icebox Murders on June 22, 1965, Houston police officers paid a welfare visit to the home of Fred and Edwina Rogers, an elderly couple. Their nephew had not heard from them in a while and wanted police to check their well-being. When the police arrived, the couple did not appear to be home, but the officers still entered to look around. As the officers prepared to leave, they opened the fridge and see something strange. The fridge was packed with meat. The officers assumed it's hog meat until he spots a human head in the vegetable bin. Investigators ultimately determined that Edwina was shot in the head and Fred was beaten to death with a hammer before being brought to the master bedroom, drained of blood, hacked into pieces, and stored in the fridge. The murderer was never arrested, although the leading suspect is the elderly couple's son, Charles. She was 43 years old at the time. To date, nobody has been able to find him. 
It's as if he vanished from the face of the earth. Hugh and Martha Gardiner, two Houstonians, have recently announced that they have cracked the icebox murder case wide open. The Gardiners claim that Charles was physically and emotionally mistreated by his parents from a young age. His parents lived in his house and took out loans in his name on a regular basis. Charles allegedly killed them because he was tired of being abused. He's thought to have escaped to Mexico and then to South America. Without any solid evidence or Charles to confirm any of these claims, the murder remains a mystery. The Boy in the Box On February 23rd, 1957, a man was inspecting his muskrat traps in the woods of Susquehanna Road in Fox Chase, Philadelphia when he discovered a baby bassinet box with a deceased body inside of it. The man had chosen not to report the body since his muskrat traps were against the law. Not wanting to get arrested for his crimes, the man simply left the box where he found it. Two days later, Frederick Benesis, a college student, was spying on girls at the Good Shepherd School when he too discovered the body. Benesis was also hesitant to alert the police, but he did so the following day. The body was that of a small child, who has since earned the nickname America's Unknown Child and Boy in the Box. The little boy was fully naked, and his hands and feet were wrinkled as if he had been soaked in water before dying. Furthermore, his esophagus contained a dark liquid, implying that he may have vomited just before he died. Cause of death appeared to be multiple strikes to the head. Despite widespread media coverage, no one came forward to say that they knew the little boy. However, there was a development in 2002 when the psychiatrist approached authorities with information about the case. The psychiatrist stated that one of her patients, Mary, told her that her parents had purchased America's unknown child and abused him. According to Mary, her mother was bathing the boy when he vomited. Mary's mother became angry and beat him to death. Mary stated she went with her mother to the woods in northeast Philadelphia where they wrapped the boy in a blanket, placed him in a box, and abandoned him there. Even though Mary was mentally ill, the detectives were confident that she was telling the truth. When Mary's identity was revealed to the public, she left the country. That is where the case went cold. No other evidence has surfaced since regarding the sad case of America's unknown child. The Black Dahlia On January 15th, 1947, the dismembered body of a lady was discovered in a vacant lot in Los Angeles Laymark Park. The scene was so weird that the woman who discovered the body, Betty Bersinger, initially thought that she had found a dismembered mannequin. The body had been fully drained of blood and appears to have been washed in the face of the victim was sliced from ear to ear. The upper and lower body parts were put a foot apart and posed as followed. Hands were placed over the head, elbows were bent, and legs were parted. The intestines were hidden beneath the buttocks. The body was ultimately identified as Elizabeth Short, later to be known as the Black Dahlia, a 22-year-old aspiring actress who was seeing a married salesman. On January 21st, six days after the terrible discovery, the editor of the Los Angeles Examiner, James Richardson, got an anonymous phone call. Richardson was warned to expect souvenirs from the caller. A peculiar envelope was discovered by a U.S. Postal Service employee on January 24th. The package was addressed to the Los Angeles Examiner and other Los Angeles papers. Elizabeth Short's birth certificate, photographs, and other personal items were included in the package. On January 26, there was another letter, and it read, Here it is, turning in Wednesday, January 29th, 10 a.m. 
Hadn't been fun at police. Black Dolly Avenger. The letter went on to say that the killer would turn himself in. He gave a time and place for police to meet him, but he never showed. Instead, he sent another letter, which said, Have changed my mind. You would not give me a square deal. Dollar killing was justified. Countless suspects and self-confessed Black Dahlia murderers have been questioned by police throughout the years. However, the Black Dahlia murderer has yet to be located, making this one of history's most puzzling unsolved murder cases. The Hall Mills Case On September 16th, 1922, Two teenage lovers were out for a walk when they came across the bodies of a man and a woman under a crab apple tree. The male had been shot once, while the woman had been shot three times. The killer had staged the bodies. Both the man and the woman's feet were pointed towards the apple tree, with the man's hand on the woman's neck and hers on his knee. The man wore a cap, and the woman wore a scarf wrapped over her neck. The woman's tongue had been forcefully removed and torn love letters were all over the place. The killer set a scene to expose the pair. The bodies belonged to Reverend Edward Wheeler Hall and Eleanor Reinhardt Mills. The two had been lovers, but their relationship was taboo, to say the least. Mills was married to the church's janitor, and Reverend Hall was married to a leading murder suspect, a wealthy woman named Francis Stephen Hall. Because the crime scene had been tainted by souvenir hunters, authorities had nothing solid to go on until Jane Gibson, also known as a pig woman, came forward. She worked as a hog farmer near the crime scene. She claimed that on the evening of September 14th, she spotted four individuals, two males and two females, in her cornfield. She then heard the lady cry, Explain these letters, followed by several gunshots and a woman yelling, Henry! No one was charged in the case, which was eventually dismissed. Four years later, however, the maid who had previously served the halls revealed that the reverend intended to annul his marriage and elope with Mills. The pig woman was summoned back in to testify, but her testimony was shown to be false. Mrs. Halls was found not guilty. The real tragedy of unsolved murders is the lack of justice for the innocent. Those who love the victims struggle with closure and not being able to confront the guilty party. Murder mysteries can be intriguing and entertaining, but they are real stories of real people who lost their lives in gruesome ways. It's unfortunate that I wasn't able to find much update on any of these cases. If anyone knows anything further that I might have missed, then please share it in the comments below. Thanks for watching our Late Night Top 5 channel. We're a new channel and would love to have your support by subscribing, liking, or simply dropping a comment down below. To watch more interesting late night videos, click the links to continue watching more.